Willie Nelson is best known for all his classic songs, his various acting roles, and his activism. Today, he lives comfortably in Maui, or at least when he's not touring. But just under 30 years ago, Willie Nelson was facing major scrutiny from the IRS, leading to a lengthy legal battle and an interesting collab album. Join Facts First as we take a closer look at Willie Nelson's rock star lifestyle and what he chooses to spend his wealth on. Willie Nelson is pretty used to life on the road. His flashy lifestyle consists of driving fancy cars around, playing shows for thousands, and earning boatloads of money, all the while trying out various investment schemes in an attempt to save it all. Unfortunately for him, some of those schemes have been deemed illegal by the IRS. In November of 1990, the feds raided Willie Nelson's home in Texas, taking everything he owned except for his guitar dubbed Trigger, which he used in the making of several of his most iconic songs. Willie gave Trigger to his daughter to keep because he anticipated there would be a raid. Naturally, Willie was on the golf course when the raid happened. In 1984, the IRS began taking a look into Nelson's tax returns and found some odd irregularities. They found there were millions in deductions from a tax shelter that Nelson invested in. He claimed it was perfectly legal, but it wasn't, and all those deductions were denied. Nelson was then hit with a fine of $6 million and ordered to pay back another $10 million in interest that accrued over the years. This led to years of courtroom drama and settlements between Willie's lawyers and the government. Nelson sued the people he invested with for $45 million, and an unknown number was settled on. But even though the original bill sent to Willie was for over $16 million, after hard-fought negotiations, they whittled that number down to just $6 million. Nelson still couldn't afford to pay that or anywhere close to it. In an interview with Texas Monthly Magazine, Nelson's daughter, Lana Nelson, said he didn't have $1 million and added he probably didn't even have $30,000. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to Facts First for more. And stick around for a lot more about Willie Nelson and his money. Paying off his debts. It's time to find out how Willie Nelson spends his millions. Simply put, he spends most of his cash paying back the IRS. All his houses and other assets combined still weren't close enough to settling his debt, so the IRS gave him the option to make an album where some of the profits went towards his outstanding debt. The album, humorously titled The IRS Tapes, Who Will Buy My Memories, was released in June 1991 with a price of $19.95. Sales of that record were split, $6 going to Nelson and 3 to the IRS. The remaining 10 went to the record company. Even though Willie was a star and had support from fans and various organizations, the album didn't sell enough to cover the debt. The good news was it certainly helped. During this time, Nelson settled some lawsuits with other cases he was caught up in and was able to cover the rest of the debt within the year. All in all, it didn't take that long to pay back all that was owed, and he ultimately learned a vital life lesson when it comes to investments. In an interview with Rolling Stone, when asked if the whole debacle took a toll on him, Willie admitted it didn't affect him that much. He said the IRS really didn't bother him after the first day of record sales. They merely wanted to find the best solution to help him. Nelson went back to doing what he loves most, making songs with Trigger and driving fancy cars. Now that he's cleared up his tax troubles, he can finally spend his millions freely and legally. Cars. He's earned more money by releasing a ton of albums and going on tours. He's an avid car collector and prefers to drive various Mercedes, an orange 1967 Ford Mustang, a classic 1983 tour bus, and to top it off, being an avid golfer, he owns a red Rolls-Royce golf cart. Real Estate Willie Nelson spends a lot of his millions on property. He was able to buy more property around the U.S. after his IRS scare, including Luck, Texas, a ranch in Spicewood, and a home in sunny Maui. In Maui, Nelson opened a bar called Charlie's. He operated it with his sons, and it was open for years. Sometimes Nelson would perform with his sons or special guests. Unfortunately, due to the pandemic, the bar had to shut down for good. Family Willie Nelson has been married four times and has seven kids. While no amount is too high for those we love, a lot of his money has gone towards trying to keep his wives happy while raising his children. How Willie Made His Millions Willie Nelson was born on the 29th of April, 1933, in Abbott, Texas. His grandfather, who raised him and his sister, bought him his first guitar when he was six. Willie wrote his first song when he was seven and sang in the church choir every Sunday. By nine, he was the guitarist in a band called Bohemian Polka. While music was his first love, in high school he played football, basketball, baseball, and was a member of the Future Farmers of America. While still in high school, Nelson joined a band formed by his sister's husband called the Texans. 
They played around town at Honky Tonks. They also played a radio show every Sunday morning. After high school, he briefly joined the Air Force. After he left the military, he enrolled at Baylor University to study agriculture. After two years of school, Nelson felt a calling to play music, so he dropped out to play full-time. To support himself, he worked as a saddle maker, tree trimmer, mechanic, and even a bouncer. Nelson's music career began after getting a job at a radio station in Pleasanton, Texas. It was there where he recorded his first two singles, The Storm Has Just Begun and When I've Sung My Last Hillbilly Song. He sent those demos to a record label but was rejected. After that, he played in nightclubs around the country until he found himself in Portland. On the West Coast, he found work at radio stations in Washington, Oregon, and Vancouver. During this time at radio stations and nightclubs, Nelson found enough time to write plenty of songs and take advantage of all the resources he had, allowing him to stockpile demos ready to send out. He got his break in Nashville in 1960 when he signed a contract and released his first album, And Then I Wrote. He became even more well-known by the mid-70s. From there, he experienced a meteoric rise to fame, and with that came fortune. Now it's time to hear from you. Were you surprised to hear about Willie's troubles with the IRS? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.